Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to find the voltages across each of the components in an RCL circuit, a circuit that has a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. However, what you'll find is when we then add up all those voltages, they do not add up to the voltage of the source. So let me illustrate and then we'll explain why. Well, first of all, how do you find the voltage across the inductor, the capacitor, and the resistor? Well, the resistor, we already know how to do that. That's simply equal to the current, I, and since, of course, we're, using, we're trying to find the RMS voltage, we use the RMS current, which we figured out in the previous video. It's simply the voltage of the source divided by the total impedance, the total opposition to the current, which is then equal to 0.4668 amps. So we take the current, we multiply times the resistance, and that will give us the voltage drop across the resistor. And so this would be equal to 0.4668 amps, multiply times the resistor of 200 ohms, and let's see what that is equal to. So times 200, and we get 93.36 volts. So that'll be 93.36 volts. And notice that it's not exactly equal to the total right here, but that's all right. That would be the RMS voltage, the average voltage across the resistor. Let's do the same for the capacitor. So that would be IRMS. And instead of using the Resistance, of course, in this case, we're going to use the capacitor reactant. So that's equal to 0.4668 amps times the capacitor reactance of, let's see here, where are we? Right here, 265.26 ohms. And that will give us the total voltage drop across the capacitor, at least not the total, but the RMS voltage drop. So 0.4668 times... 265.26 and we get 123.82 that's 123.82 volts all right and then finally for the inductor we take the rms current and multiply times the reactants of the inductor so here we have 0 0.4668 amps multiply times 188.50 188 188.50 ohms and that would be equal to, so 0.4668 times 188.5, and we get, hmm, looks like almost exactly 87.99. All right, that would be 87.99 volts. All right, those are the three voltages. It's kind of odd when you look at that because typically what we do if we use Kirchhoff's rule and we go all the way around uh, of course, the circuit, you can see that when uh, we go across the voltage source, we have a 100 volt RMS, then we, we have a voltage drop across the inductor, a voltage drop across the resistor, and a voltage drop across the capacitor. And so those three voltages should add up to the voltage of the source. But if we add those up together right here, notice what happens. Something very strange happens when we add the three voltages together. So we get 87.99 plus 123.82 plus 93.36 and we get a total of 305.17 volts. Wow, that doesn't make a lot of sense, at least initially when we look at it, you go, how can all the voltages across the three components not add up to the total voltage of the source? And of course the answer is because those voltages do not reach a maximum value across those components at the same time, they're out of phase. Matter of fact, the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor are 180 degrees out of phase. So when one reaches a maximum, the other one reaches a minimum. And so we cannot just algebraically add those three together. We have to add them vectorially. We have to take into account the phase difference. And if we do that, then they should add up to always, no matter what phase they're in, 100 volts total the voltage of the source. So in the next video, we'll show you how to add up the voltage pro appropriately or properly so that they will add up to the expected value of 100 volts by taking into account that there's phase differences between these three components. So stay tuned for the next video if you're interested in learning how to do that.